Hey everyone, welcome to ISTQB Foundation Exam Questions and Answers. And in this video, I'm going to cover another five exam questions with detailed explanation. Don't think of these as just the exam questions. These questions that I'm covering in this particular set are really going to help you in the testing, designing your test cases effectively, hands-on projects. Okay, so understanding these because these are on the equivalence partition and how you're going to design your test cases. So going to be really, really helpful. Okay, so now first question of this video will be little long. So you are testing a form that verifies the correctness of the length of the password given as input. Okay, the form accepts a password with the correct length and rejects a password that is too short or too long. Okay, so the path password length is correct if it is between 6 to 12 characters inclusive. Okay, so here you will see that it is between 6 to 12 characters inclusive. Otherwise, it is considered inclusive correct at first the form is empty password length is zero you apply boundary value analysis to path password length variable your set of test cases achieve 100 percent two value boundary value coverage okay so now here they are saying that whatever set you have covers 100 percent of two value boundary value coverage the team decided that due to the high risk of this component test cases should be added to ensure 100 percent three value boundary value coverage as well okay which additional password length should be tested to achieve this now a couple of things here first thing in this sort of question you first have to understand how to create the equivalence partition okay then based on those equivalence partitions you have to understand about two value boundary value coverage what what values will be there for two value boundary value coverage and then also come up with the numbers or with the values with the test values that will achieve three value boundary value coverage okay now because they are saying you already achieved your set of test cases already achieved two value boundary value coverage so then out of those three value boundary value coverage numbers that we got will deduct the two value boundary value coverage and the answer will be our option which will be the one option out of these options that are shown here a b c d okay so let's quickly create the partitions okay so password length correct length is between 6 to 12 characters right so basically if we talk about this sort of equivalence partition so we have we can create three partitions right so one is the valid partition and then we can create two invalid partitions okay invalid so valid partition is will accept the characters between 6 to 12 right so 6 to 12 comes in valid partition so anything 6 or 12 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 right so any characters can be chosen in the password anything above 12 okay so that means 13 will be considered as invalid password incorrect length and then anything below 6 say for example 5 which is next boundary which is the boundary of the invalid will be considered as invalid right now here you will see that at first the form is empty so password length is 0 right so basically we can say 0 to 5 is invalid and anything 13 and above is invalid okay so now for two value boundary coverage you already have two value boundary coverage okay what that means is in the equivalence partition you consider or you basically have the boundary conditions already covered so if we talk about two value boundary coverage that means in each partition all the boundary values that are there you have already had those okay so if we talk about so here in the invalid what are the boundary values 0 5 right and then in the valid partition 6 12 and then in the invalid 13 right so this is basically what will you will cover so in each of the boundaries you have taken the lower boundary in each of the partition you have considered lower boundary upper boundary right and that's how you will get the coverage okay that's the two value boundary coverage basically for all three partitions okay so this is basically if you, what what they are saying is that your set of test cases achieves 100 percent of two value boundary value coverage so that means you already have these numbers these tests now you have to get three value boundary coverage okay you have to add more test cases or more numbers or more options here to achieve three value boundary value analysis so three value boundary when uh, boundary value coverage you will achieve what it says is that not only the lower and the upper boundary of a partition but you take a value of the partition so the lower value of the partition and one low and one higher value okay so for each value value for three value uh, three value boundary value so for zero so because this is minimum password length can be zero so there is nothing negative in this particular case so we can't go negative here so if we talk about three 
value boundary. So we have to choose the boundary and one above, which is one and below is not valid so that we can ignore. Then we come to five, right? So five is the boundary. So one below, what is below five? It is four. And what is above five? So along with five, we also have to take above five, which is six. Okay. So now if we consider six, we have below, which is five. What is above six, which, which is seven, right? So for three value, we have to consider the boundary and a value below and a value above it, right? So we have got seven. Now we come to this boundary, 12. So we have to consider what is below 12. We have to consider 11, whatever is below 12. So 11 and then 12. What is above 12, which is 13, which is another boundary of the invalid party and then we have this 13 so we are covering below which is 12 and we should be covering one more which is 14 right and that should be it right so basically this is what this is what will give us 100% three value boundary coverage okay now the question says you already have achieved two value boundary value analysis boundary value coverage that means you already have these numbers so you just remove the ones that are already there in the two value boundary okay so we remove 5, we remove 6, we remove 12 and we remove 13. So what are we left with? We are left with 1, 4, 7, 11 and 14. Okay. So we have to add these test cases, these numbers, these tests, these scenarios in order to get 100% three value boundary value coverage. So these are the additional password lengths we have to add. Let's see where we have this option. We have this here in the D1, 4, 7, 11 and 14. So D is the correct answer for this particular question. Okay, so that's how you are going to come up with these sort of question along with the detailed analysis. Okay, so now moving to the next one. So this question, the second question is basically on the decision table and this contains a rule for determining the risk of atherosclerosis and what the conditions are. You will see different rules based on cholesterol and blood pressure level. The risk level is identified. Okay. So now if we see what exactly they are asking, you have designed the test cases with the following test input data, which what is the decision table coverage achieved by these test cases. Now there are five test cases and if you have to get the 100% coverage of this decision table, your test case should cover each rule, your data set in your test case should cover at least, you know, the rule once, right? So then you will get 100% decision table coverage. So what we have to identify is these test cases, which risk level, which rule are they covering? Okay. And how many rules out of five? So here there are how many rules? Five. So if all five are covered, that means we have achieved 100% decision table coverage. So here they are asking, what is the decision table coverage? achieved by these test cases. So let's first analyze these test case and see which rule they are covering, right? So we go with the first one where it says cholesterol 125, which is greater than 124. Basically it's in this rule three, 125. Okay. And the blood pressure is 141. Okay. So 141, but because the, it is on rule three and then rule four, it could be also rule four because rule four is also 125 and BP is 141. That means it's greater than 140, right? So this test case is covering which rule? It is covering this rule 4, right? Which is high, okay? Because 125 is here and great, 141 is greater, BP is greater than 141, okay? Now moving to the second one, cholesterol is 200 and BP is 201. So where does 200 fit in? 200 is here as well in rule 3 and 200 is in the rule 4 as well. So we have to come to the second one, BP, which is greater than, which is 201. Again, is greater than 140, right? So again, Again, this is this also will cover rule number four, right? Which is high because 200 is the highest range here, and then 201 is greater than 140, so it's again going to cover rule four. Now, coming to the third one, which is 124 cholesterol, so 124 less than or equal to here, and then less than or equal to. So basically, rule one and rule two match for cholesterol. Let's go to the blood pressure 201, right? So here, if you see, very low is only when it, the BP is less than 140 if it is greater than 140 then the risk is low even if your cholesterol is less than or equal to right so it's not very low it's low so basically it's covering rule 2 which is low right now test case 4 cholesterol is 109 which is again less than 124 so basically rule 1 and rule 2 both say less than or equal to 124 so this can fit in either in rule 2 or rule 1 based on what BP is mentioned so BP is 200 which is again it will again 
come to rule 2 because it's here it says less than or equal to 140 and BP is 200 which is greater than 140. So it, this is again this test case again covers rule number 2 and risk level low. Now coming to the last question last test case which is cholesterol 201 and BP is 140. So 201 comes to the rule 5 right 201 is here and then BP is 140 doesn't matter as far as it's here in the rule 5 that means it's covering this particular rule so any BP here right so this is covering rule 5 very high okay so how many rules are covered in this decision table 4 is covered twice 2 is covered twice and 5 is covered once so out of 5 rules out of 5 rules how many got covered 1 2 and 3 right so these two data sets are covering just one rule these two set data sets are covering just one rule which is rule number 2 and this data set is covering another rule so 3 out of 5 okay into 100 okay so 300 by 5 which is 60 percent right so 60 if we talk about the percentage wise right if we talk about percentage you will see that the decision coverage decision table coverage achieved by these test cases b which is 60 percent right because only three out of five test cases are covered so the correct answer is b which is 60 percent for this particular question okay so now i think this video will become really long so let's stop it here with just two questions so that you can easily go ahead and consume what i have explained because next question is also on state transition diagram it will take a little more time to explain and give details on all of that so i'll cover these detailed question or i'll cover less question in in videos if the question is really complex and detailed okay so in the next video i'll cover another four five questions five questions if they are not very big if they are big then two three questions in the in the next video so that's all for this video see you in the next one thank you